Welcome to Coco Studio Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Eulen. For more information, go to bobeulen.com slash cocos2d. This tutorial is called The Magic of BB Slider. BB Slider is a class that I have written and that you can download and drag into your project. To make a slider with it, you have to provide two images yourself. An image for the background of the slider and an image for the thumb of the slider. BB Slider has two class methods that you can use. The first one is used when you want to make a simple slider and the second is used when you want to make a more complex slider. As you can see, these methods have many parameters. Let's talk a little about them before we go to Xcode and make our own sliders. Here is an empty iPhone screen. To make a slider, you need two images. A slider background, for instance looking like this, and the slider thumb, for instance looking like this. Together they form a slider. Observe that the background is fixed, while the thumb can move. In order to specify the movement of the thumb, we need to specify some parameters. The leeway determines how much the thumb can move from the center of the background. In our case, the thumb can move 84 pixels to the left from the center and 84 pixels to the right from the center. The center of the background can differ from the center of the thumb as you can see in our case. The difference in pixels is specified by the parameter called Offset. When the user moves the slider, we want to receive values that means something in our application. For instance, if the slider controls the tilt angle of some device, that we want to be able to change from minus 10 degrees to 120 degrees, we would specify minus 10 as the mean value and 120 as max value. When the slider appears the first time, we want to control its start value. We can do that by setting the start parameter. We support two types of sliders horizontal and vertical. In our case we have a horizontal slider that is controlled by a boolean called is horizontal. As the user drags the slider, the slider will send the updated values to our program. It can send the values in two different ways. It can send the values continuously while the user drags the slider or just once when the user lets go of the slider. That behavior is controlled by the is rolling parameter. Here is another slider. It is vertical. Hence, we set the is horizontal parameter to no. Here are the other parameters that we need to specify. It's a lot of parameters. Sometimes we just want to specify a very simple slider and in that case we can give some of these parameters default values so that we do not need to specify them. Suppose that we have the following simple slider. Which parameters can be default for simple sliders? Simple sliders are horizontal so is horizontal can be set to yes. Simple sliders always start at the center of the background, so offset can be set to zero. Simple sliders do not send rolling values to our program, so is rolling can be set to no. Simple sliders can move so that the left edge of the thumb touches the left edge of the background, and similarly for the right edge. 
Since we know the geometry of the background and the thumb, we can calculate the leeway. So to summarize, for simple sliders, we do not need to specify the green parameters. Here is an example of specifying a simple slider. As you can see, we are providing a background image, a thumb image, and the mean, max and start values. We are telling the slider that the game layer object itself is a delegate and that the slider should call the slider value method each time the user lets go of the slider. You can also see down here that we control the position of the slider in the usual manner. The label that you see here is not a part of the slider. It is something that we are controlling from the slider value message. We can do whatever we please with the received values. Move a sprite, change a color or change a label as we have done here. It's entirely up to you. Here is another more complex slider. It is specified in similar way but it has more parameters. Leeway, offset, is horizontal and is rolling. As before, it's up to you what to do with the received values. Let's now go to Xcode and try it out ourselves. We are inside Xcode. Our task is to implement two sliders, a simple one and a more complex one. Our plan is to use the BB slider. Let's look at our starting point. We have four images. The first is called Simple Slider Background. The second is called Simple Thumb. These two images will make up our first slider. The third image is called Vertical Slider Background. And the fourth is called Vertical Thumb. Those two images will make up our second slider. Let's look at the BB slider, the interface part. As you can see, there are two methods we can call. The first is used to create simple sliders. And the second method is used to create more complex sliders. Below the method declarations, we find a description of each parameter. Let's now take a look at the game layer, the interface part. Here we are declaring a BB slider called MySlider. We also have a label and a number formatter. We will use the label to display the received values from the slider and we will use the number formatter to make sure that the label displays the correct number of decimals. Let's look at the implementation file. In the jump bar, we can see that we have grouped our methods in three groups. Initialization, Setup and Callback. In Setup, we have three methods. To set up a simple slider, to set up a complex slider, and to set up a label. In the callback group we have a method that receives the values from the slider and the method that formats those values to correct number of decimals. Let's begin with init method. We start by calling the setup simple slider and then we call setup label. Let's go to Setup Simple Slider. We are creating a slider by sending a message to the BB Slider class. We are setting the game layer itself as the delegate that will receive the values from the slider. We are specifying that we want the values to be sent to the slider value method, which we have defined up here. 
we specify the background image and the thumb image. We then specify that our slider will send values between 0 and 1 and that the starting value should be 0 0.4. We then position the slider at 210 and 160 and then we add it to the layer. Let's now look at setup label method. It begins getting the value from the label, which we know is 0 0.4, and make it into a string with two decimals. We use that string to create our label and put it at the position 360, 180. We add it to the layer and we also make an empty NS formatter object that we will use later. Let's look at the slider value method. This method is called by the slider each time the slider is moved. We receive an NS number called value. We call the method string for NS number and send along the value and also an integer telling that we want to format the string so that it has two decimals. That method is defined up here. And as you can see, it uses the number formatter object to transform our value into a string having two decimals. The return value is displayed in the label by this line. Let's test if this works. Build and run. And here is our slider. And here is our label. As we drag the slider, nothing happens. But once we let go, the label is updated. Stop. Let's create a more complex slider. In the init method, comment out this line and uncomment this line. Now we are calling setup complex slider. Let's look at its code. Here we are doing just as before only using other images and other values for mean, max and start. But below here we specify more parameters. We are specifying that we want our slider thumb to be able to move exactly 157 pixels. We are specifying that the thumb center should be 12 pixels left of the background's center. We are telling that we want a vertical slider. And we are telling that we want a continuous stream of values as the user drags the slider. So let's test this. Build and run. Here is our slider. It is vertical. As we move the slider, the label is updated immediately. We don't have to let go of the slider in order to receive the values. That's everything for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.